Hi, my name is Masha. I'm the blonde from Coding Blonde, and today I'm being joined by another fellow techie blonde on YouTube, Catherine from Blondie Bites. You can check out her channel in the description, and also there'll be a link somewhere here in one of the corners. But yes, Catherine is a software developer, so I wanted to ask her a couple of questions about her journey and about her experience and what advice she would give to starting software developers. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? <laughs> Doing well. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on my channel once again. It's so nice to have you here as as a guest again and um, I'm very excited to uh, for you to share your journey and your advice with uh, the audience thank you so much for having me again <laughs> <laughs> yeah guys we've already recorded a video together so you can check that out here but do that after you watch this video <laughs> um, all right so let's jump straight into it what does it mean to be a software developer? What do you do? Being a software developer means you develop software. I think that a lot of times, you know, when you think of someone that's a computer scientist or a software developer, you really don't understand what they do. If you think of, you know, a doctor, you visit a doctor, you know what a doctor does. Like if you visit, you know, a veterinarian or, you know, a chef, like a dancer, like it's very clear on what they do. Um, for a software developer, basically you're writing code. So you open up some kind of editor. So if you, like if you think of photos, you know Photoshop. If you want to edit photos, you open Photoshop, you edit the you know the the picture, and then you export. For coding or software development, you can open up like basically a software program where you can type in specific characters that you know are defined as certain things in code. So you might create, you know, a function or some kind of algorithm that does something. So creating something where you, you know, like you might create a function where, you know, you take a group of people and put them in pairs. You know, that would be something that you could write in this program and then print out or basically show and, to, you know, display all of the different pairs. And so that is like kind of the very bare bones of like, okay, you're developing some kind of program that does something and that you know does something could mean you're creating something that's entertaining and that you know brings people to whatever you're doing they want to play that game it could mean you know creating the facebook and the software you know developing software so that you can interact with a program it's a very very big feel obviously you know all of these different websites all of these different apps all of these different you know even the alexa skills and google actions and vr and ar and machine learning like all of that takes software development but the core of it is opening up some kind of program, writing some code, and then having that code. You press a play button or you execute that code and then it produces an output. That is a very good explanation. And <laughs> I love how, how he starts it off with doctors and careers that we actually know. It's so true. A lot of people who don't have never written code, they don't really understand what it looks like, what the process looks like. Um, but for those who are more familiar with that, what technologies do you normally focus on and what programming languages do you use on a regular basis? I think, well, right now I work in like our research and development group and so it really changes day to day because we're focusing on emerging technology. And so if you think, um, like right now I'm really focusing on Google Actions and Alexa skills, and a lot of that is done with JavaScript, which runs on Node.js. So JavaScript is your language, Node.js is a platform that you can then run your applications on. Node.js is more of a back-end technology, so something that users of the application probably don't interact with or see, but it's doing hard work behind the scenes. Um, another language or framework or language really that I use is also C-sharp, so to create like virtual reality applications or augmented reality applications, so through VR or AR. Um, often you'll go into Unity, which is again like a type of software program similar to your Photoshop, but for code, and it has a visual ed editor where you can like pull in 3D assets, and then with code you can make those assets interactive, and you know add user input and all that good stuff. And those code files or scripts, um, they can be written in JavaScript, but um, most often they're written in C-sharp. 
That's awesome. Um, and yeah, great visual. Great, a great visual to kind of imagine a Photoshop and then coding or just using a program that is similar to that to kind of create the environment and create the whatever you want to create <laughs> your final project. And how did you get into this? How did you learn how to code? I think like it really started when I was like very young, like Neopets and MySpace were my thing. Um, in Neopets and MySpace, we both, they both had ways where you could basically go into an editor and edit certain web pages. For Neopets, you would join like a community thing called a guild, or you could customize your profile page. And in MySpace, it was your profile page. And basically, you could go behind the scenes and add code to it. And so you could make certain things bold, you could make certain things, you know, other colors, you could make you know, your mouse pointer sparkly and green or whatever you wanted. It was really a basis for learning how to code, even though it wasn't marketed as, as that. It was, you know, an area where I want to make, you know, my MySpace page look really cool. So I'm going to learn how to do these things so I can be the cool kid in school. Um, and so, and definitely, yeah, it was not marketed, was not advertised as, oh, you're coding. This is going to make you a lot of money in like 10 years or five years or whatever. Um, and there was a huge like tutorial online community of, you know, people posting tutorials on like how you make certain web pages or people that would even just put code up and be like, this code makes this web page. And you would just copy and paste it and then maybe make a few edits to make it yours. And um, so did that, like, I didn't know I was coding. My parents didn't know I was coding. No one knew that we, no one knew they were coding. Um, <laughs> And then in college, ended up taking a computer science class my first semester. Absolutely loved it. Was obsessed. Um, yeah, I always loved like math and science. Uh, I had a really short lab. Wasn't interested in bio and chem, and wanted to fill a requirement for you know a certain program. And ended up taking computer science. Was obsessed. Like I remember being at the end of my first lab and feeling like I, I was superwoman. Like I had just done this really, you know, everyone had always told me that engineering and computer science and all these things are so difficult, but I was able to walk into that lab and print Hello World and I was it. Like I was done. I was a code of your life at that point. I was just like, this is it. Ended up like convincing two people on my floor. I was like, you have to take this class. You have to take this class. Like this is amazing. You have to do it. Look at this thing I built. It's so amazing. Look at this. Um, and I was just enthralled in that, yeah, and that's what happened. <laughs> that's amazing. And I love the fact that as a child, you already uh, experienced the whole Googling and copy pasting code, um, kind of that process, because as an adult, once you learn a language, you continue doing that all the time. Because why reinvent the wheel if somebody has already created that piece of code? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. And <clears throat> I mean, there's so much and uh, so much to technology and so many different dimensions. And in the other video, we even spoke about machine learning. It's going to be in the corner here um, or here. <laughs> but It'll be somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it will be somewhere in the corner. Uh, <laughs> but there's so many different dimensions to technology and there's so many updates coming out all the time and new programming languages just, you know, it's almost overwhelming. How do you stay up to date with all of that stuff? Well, I think it's definitely, it's definitely not easy. Like you, you know, I feel like a new Angular is coming out every day. <laughs> um, but I think it, like you, there's two things you can kind of stay on top of like one is just tech trends like what is the new apple product to come out what is the new google thing to come out and that can be like a product that came out and now you can develop on that product or it can be just a new api that came out or a new functionality that you know another tech company is offering that now you can integrate into your systems that might be useful for you um and kind of the other side of that is staying up to date on your language of choice. And so, you know, Java, you know, a lot of people were on Java 8 for a long time, and then now Java 9 and 10 are coming out. So understanding what the new features are and being able to integrate that into the code that you already have and take advantage of those new features coming out. And then you also have that kind of 
backlash, at least on the Android side, of like if you don't have the most up to date device, then you can't even use the new functionalities. But as you're saying up to date, going back to that original question, um, for me, it's following a lot of tech blogs like TechCrunch. Like I check that pretty often just to see what new things are going on and what new deals have been made. Because it's also like tech deals. The technology is a huge deal. Um, and then as for technical school, as for technical skills, I usually try to go to hackathons because um, a lot of times, uh, at least when I was in college, a lot of times I went to hackathons to get my hands on the latest technology and so getting my hands on that DK2 from Oculus before like the Oculus Rift was out was like huge and I got to learn and how to program on it and it ended up being really easy because I knew Unity and C Sharp already. But I didn't realize that those are the tools that you needed in order to create like. VR, virtual reality applications. Um, so I think, you know, going to tech events and talking to other people and just seeing where, you know, there are alignments and seeing what they're working on and they can hear what you're working on. And yeah, being involved in the tech community, looking at tech blogs and then going to hackathons where you're actually developing and you're actually like building your skills. Those are going to be your top things. That's awesome. I never thought of hackathons um, as a way to kind of stay up to date, but that's an awesome advice because, well, hackathons are amazing and <laughs> it's great that you can actually learn skills there and there because they also, a lot of the times, they have workshops, right? And <laughs> you can really learn about these new technologies. <clears throat> that's awesome. And what would you recommend for someone who is just starting their journey into tech? Um, are there any resources? Are there any mindsets? Anything that you think that they should try out or keep in mind in that sense? I think, like, and I, and I think back to when I, like, kind of started coding with Neopets and MySpace. And it's really, you need to want to learn technology to build a certain product. Like, you're not going to go and learn how to code just because you want to learn how to code. Like, you're probably learning how to code to build an iOS app or you're learning how to code to, you know, make an Alexa skill or make some weird AR thing that's going to be awesome, you know, or to make your personal website. You know, you're learning how to code for a reason, and that reason can't just be that you want to be smarter, that you want that job, that software developer job. Like, that can't be the reason. You have to have a problem, like an idea of something you want to build. And that thing is never, it's not, it's not going to be perfect, but just having the mindset of, like, I want to build this thing, and along the way I'm going to learn a lot of different things and ultimately I'll have you know built something out of those and learned a lot along the way um so definitely that and then definitely try to stick with one language at the start it really doesn't matter what language you choose just like and obviously if you want to make the iOS app I would say Swift if you want to make you know the Android app Java or Kotlin um if you want to make um like something in VR C Sharp if you want to make a voice app JavaScript and then Node.js, learning the tools that come with Node.js. Um, but yeah, I think I think what you're trying to build to build will determine your language and what, and then from that just keep going. And Google's your best friend. Like Google everything. You know, a lot of times it'll feel like ah, intimidating. What do I Google? There's this thing called Stack Overflow. A lot of times people will ask you know questions on that, and you can just kind of follow the answers and figure it out. Um, looking at documentation, really understanding like your language of choice and the tools that come with it. Um, but yeah, and then definitely watching YouTubers like us. Like that's going to be a tip. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but yeah. That's awesome. Um, thank you so much. This was very, very valuable for everyone to hear and especially those who are starting out. It's, it's overwhelming sometimes and you're so right mm -hmm. in the sense that they need to focus on what they want to build first and then kind of go from there and decide on what technologies and what languages to learn based off of that. So yeah, thank you so much, Catherine. This was awesome. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, this was amazing. It's always great to talk to you. <laughs> thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you so much, Catherine. This was awesome. So much amazing knowledge has just been shared. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Make sure to check out Catherine's YouTube channel and also Instagram account. 
all of those will be linked below. So yeah, scroll down and find Catherine's channels. Oh, and a quick side note, since I've recorded this video, Catherine has launched an awesome podcast called The Programmer Toolbox together with Robin Silver. I will leave a link to that in the description as well, so go check that out for sure. Back to the original footage. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think or if you relate to some of the stuff that Catherine has shared or if you have any ideas, suggestions, all that good stuff. Please share those in the comments below or in my Instagram. Um, you can find those links also in the description. Make sure to follow my channel as well because there will be good stuff coming your way and you know, just good karma in general. Uh, but yeah, have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.